Hey everybody, I'm Jeannie Wohler, and I'm a goalkeeper for Utah State University's women's soccer team. No. That was wrong. Let me try again. Sorry. Hey everybody, I'm Jeannie Wohler, and I'm a student athlete. Shoot. This is TEDx Jeannie. Come on. Put yourself together. Okay. I should probably explain before I embarrass myself any further. Over the last few months, I've been trying really hard to getting used to not introducing myself as a soccer-playing student-athlete. This past May, I graduated from Utah State University, but last October, I exhausted my four-year eligibility as a goalkeeper for Utah State University's Division I soccer program. In fact, three days ago marked the one-year anniversary since I played in my final game wearing a Utah State jersey but it also marked the final game of my 18-year soccer playing career. This picture was taken a few seconds after the final whistle blew in that game a year ago. My team was playing a rival from our conference, and in order to move on into the conference tournament and play another game, my team had to win. But selfishly, I knew I had to win so that I could play another game. But after two overtime periods and a score of one to one, we tied. I remember my coach said to me after that game, not a lot of people can say their soccer careers didn't end in a loss. <laughs> and while I agreed, that tie ended my career. So I did lose something. I'd lost the 18 years I dedicated to this sport. I'd lost five-year-old Jeannie. I lost 13-year-old Jeannie. I lost 21-year-old Jeannie. What I lost was my identity. Over the next few months, I didn't really eat. I stopped working out and I hurled myself into school to mask the soccer identity that was so noticeably gone. I'd hoped the quicker I could remove myself emotionally from soccer and my teammates, the easier things would be. And then one night, I remember looking at myself in the mirror and wondering where all of my leg muscle went. I hadn't noticed my skin shrinking against my hip bones as they began to stick out over my shorts. I hadn't expected, nor did I understand, how so many years of constant work to build strength and muscle and self-confidence could all diminish so quickly. I constantly had to remind myself that I did as much as I could while I was a soccer player. I was on a full ride. I set university records. I was USU's Female Athlete of the Year. But I refused to admit that I was broken. I used to stand in front of the mirror and say to my reflection, you're fine. You're OK. You, you did as much as you could. You don't miss it. You can't miss it. Until, until I broke down sobbing in my car after the first game, my team played without me. I know people experience the loss of their athletic careers at different ages, some far younger than me and some older. Often some are forced to stop playing due to injuries or because they weren't presented the opportunity to play in college. Some choose to stop playing though that doesn't make their loss any easier. Of course, the loss of identity doesn't only exist in soccer or athletics in general. This experience has existed for every generation at ages I have yet to experience and in ways I never will. These losses could occur when we graduate from high school or college, when becoming empty nesters, when entering into retirement, or even after losing a religion. And when we lose those titles, we become someone unrecognizable to ourselves because we've lost the only thing that was ever really consistent. And trust me, it's hard to find value in this world when what you are is ambiguous. And recognizing my experience was in no way unique. 
I couldn't understand why my loss felt so particularly difficult. As a millennial, a generation stereotypically afforded more overall opportunity than past generations, why was I deeply struggling? When my life was and still is objectively privileged, why did I feel, and to some extent still feel, so worthless? It was in contemplating this question that I realized my transition away from soccer wasn't necessarily so hard because I lost my core identity. Instead, what was so hard was that I lost the institutions, the external platforms for which this identity, and inevitably myself, could be validated by others. I've noticed that much of the way millennials, myself included, feel validated is through various platforms for which we can quantify our levels of self-worth. Now, objective comparison is not a new phenomenon, but now, more than ever, the platform for which we can compare are far more accessible. Something as simple as how many likes we receive on an Instagram or Facebook or Twitter post. These outlets began in the years my peers and I were most insecure, and instead of turning inward to learn to overcome our insecurities ourselves, we reached out so that others would do it for us. Because our lives are more public than ever, we feel we must constantly portray ourselves as happy or adventurous or successful in some way because maybe if the outside world believes it, then in our lowest moments, so might we. What's continually lost is this inner vision of success. We've lost sight of an internal validation, the voice that says, I am good enough because I am good enough. Instead of, I am good enough because somebody else thinks or says I'm good enough. There's a huge disconnect here. And after 22 years of that constant outside validation, I'll be honest with you, I have no idea how to continue without it. I never truly learned how to bask in this space of uncertainty, how to exist without a stage for external praise. Until now. Well, not exactly right now. <laughs> but this uncertainty, this inability to articulate who I am or what I want to do, should not be plastered over with snapshots of a life I'm not really living. It should not be hidden. Instead, these fearful feelings of this transitional time should be accepted. And because acceptance is inherently an internal process, it is something only I or you can know. Even if we do decide to talk about it on a larger platform like, I don't know, a TEDx stage, and receive that validation, it is only internally that we can understand our true success. I think in order to lift ourselves up in our lowest moments, sometimes our movement can't just be upwards and outwards, but must instead be downwards and inwards, and this is where the progress lies. But that inward movement is hard. I struggle with it daily. I mean, don't get me wrong, I really want you guys to clap and tell me I did a good job when I get off this stage. But I also know that if for some reason you don't, I'll be okay. And that's because this inward movement can only begin by reveling in the pureness of ordinary moments that we experience during our transition. By breathing in the uncertainty of our existence and exhaling beauty in the small acts of quiet self acceptance. So, all that being said, I'd like to try and introduce myself one more time. Okay. Hey everybody, I'm Jeannie Wohler and I'm not a soccer player anymore, even though I've been one for as long as I can remember, and I just moved back in with my parents and started working at my old high school, which I know doesn't seem like it's that big of a deal because I'm only 22, but it feels like a really big deal. Like, I'm not succeeding in the ways I thought I would, and now that I don't have soccer, I don't know how to judge my self-worth, and, like, I should really finish unpacking my room. It's been five months since I graduated, but the funny thing is, is that my opportunities are terrifyingly endless, and yet, 
The other day, I drank a cup of coffee alone on the back porch and listened to the cars drive by my house. Nobody knew. And in that moment, my internal voice said, you are good enough. Thank you. <laughs>